Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, we're going to see the design and simulation of an inverting summer. So it's also referred to as summer or add a circuit. So let's get started. This is a circuit diagram of an inverting summer. So it basically contains uh, resistors R1, R2, R3 connected in parallel with respect to voltage sources V1, V2, V3. Uh, so what is the basic functionality of this particular circuit? So when V1, V2, V3 is supplied, the output, if R1, R2, R3, RF, all of them are same, then V out is nothing but minus of V1 plus V2 plus V3. So Y minus, it produces a phase shift of about my, uh, 180 degree with respect to the input terminal. So the output will be inverted with respect to the inputs. So as a result, we'll be having a minus sign at the output. Two important points to note, the output will be the sum of the inputs and uh, the output will have 180 degree phase shift with respect to the input terminals. So that's the reason why it is called as an inverting summer. There is another concept called as non-inverting summer as well, but I'm not going to do, go through it in this particular video. So uh, this is the supply voltage. If you're having V1 has to be equal to four volt and V2 to be equal to two volt, the output V out will be equal to minus 6 volt if you carefully see it is starting from the negative direction and it will be equal to minus of v1 plus v2 if suppose r1 r2 and rf are the same values so very very important i've only considered two sources so if r1 r2 rf is not same then the gain formula change like the output voltage expression changes that is minus of you'll be getting rf by r1 into v1 plus rf by r2 into v2 that you have to solve you'll be getting a value so based on that you'll have to do so uh, we, once you know what is the circuit diagram, what is the waveform, we'll look at the design procedure. So any design requires certain assumptions. I'll be assuming the supply voltage in this case, V1 to be equal to 4 volt, V2 to be equal to 2 volt. And uh, I will be choosing R1, R2, RF. Uh, so based on the criteria that if they're chosen same, then the output voltage will be the sum of the input voltage. So based on that, I've chosen R1, R2 and RF to be the same values. So I've chosen to be equal to 5 kilo ohm. You can try it for different values as well. So V out that we are supposed to get is minus of v1 plus v2 that is 4 plus 2 that will be equal to minus 6 volt so very very important observation once the design procedure and what is the expected waveforms and the circuit diagram is clear we will be able to simulate them in matlab so let's go to matlab all right here we are so one of the greatest features that matlab has provided is the simulink library browser so click on simulink library browser and you will be able to search the components that are required according to your circuit diagram so we would be requiring an ac voltage so search for ac voltage over here at this block we will be requiring it uh, so one of the main important observations that needs to be made here is that um, we are not supposed to choose the ones that are there in black that is used for power electronic applications. Uh, the ones that are there in blue is used for signals and systems, operational amplifiers or uh, building a circuit with respect to amplifiers and uh, something that are associated with real uh, world like voltage sensors, temperature sensors and all those stuff. We are supposed to use the ones that are there in blue. Uh, once that is done, uh, we would be requiring a voltage sensor. So search for voltage sensor over here and you will be getting it uh, right at the top add that block as well uh, we would also require an electrical ground uh, so uh, search for electrical reference it is named as uh, electrical reference uh, with respect to MATLAB and uh, choose the one that is there in blue once all of these are done we would be requiring a solver configuration block so one of the most important blocks with respect to simulation if you don't have this block simulation will not take place at all so the reason is very simple this is used uh, to uh, convert uh, the model that you have developed to add the solver parameters with respect to the circuit and uh, it uh, does the process in the back end while the simulation is taking place. So that's the reason why we need a solver configuration block. Uh, apart from that, we need a simulink converter, which is very important. So search for simulink converter at this block as well. This is a, a simulink converter is required because uh, we are using a voltage sensor in this circuit. So for example, if you, uh, 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 any, any quantities, any sensors, for example, temperature sensor, all of them are associated with real world, isn't it? So they are physical quantities and they need to be converted with respect to the MATLAB simulink process. So as a result, we need to uh, use a simulink converter in order to convert them. Once all of these is done, we would require a resistor. Uh, this is according to our circuit diagram. So search for resistor and choose the one that is there in blue. Add that block as well. And once all of these are done, we would be requiring an op-amp, uh, which is the heart of our circuit. So add op-amp as well. So uh, we have placed all the components uh, appropriate. Like one, once we have all of them, we will be placing placing it in our respective position so that we can get started with the circuit connections. So one of the most important observations, according to our circuit diagram, it is minus and plus isn't it so just for our convenience we will again change it to minus and plus how do we do that right click on the pump 
and go to rotate and flip go to uh, flip block and choose up down so once this is done you will be getting minus and plus now in this particular direction so we would be connecting a resistor so uh, we would require two resistors and two sources according to uh, the circuit so we are not using three sources we are only using two sources so copy paste uh, the AC sources as well uh, and we would be requiring one resistor in the feedback path over here so connect this uh, in this particular position and connect this at this point and uh, we will be connecting the AC supply at this point uh, with respect to the respective uh, resistors that is R1 and R2 we will be requiring another ground so copy paste the ground uh, control C and control V uh, and then we will be connecting in this particular fashion we can sc scroll this down a little bit uh, we would be requiring a feedback resistor uh, at the feedback path over here so connect them in this particular fashion uh, apart from that we also need a scope so search for scope scope is used to in order to display the type of waveform that you are getting you can clearly see how it looks like so a uh, very important block and uh, once all of these are done uh, we will be uh, connecting uh, the voltage sensors and we also need another ground in order to connect it to the non-inverting terminal over here uh, so connect it in this particular fashion so voltage sensor uh, should be connected with respect to positive and negative terminals so this is supply one that is v1 so connect it with respect to positive and ground we need a uh, symlink converter since sensors require uh, conversion of physical quantity into the symlink one so you would require this particular converter and you will be connecting it directly to the scope over here once this is done we will be requiring another voltage sensor isn't it because we need to see the voltage v2 so uh, connect it at this particular point and uh, with respect to ground over here so we will be placing it in uh, so just ex extend this a little bit down so that we'll be getting a point where we can connect it to the ground so we'll be connecting in this particular fashion and uh, we would be requiring another uh, simulink converter uh, for this particular voltage sensor isn't it so we will be copy pasting this voltage sensor just control c and control v and uh, we'll be connecting this at this point over here and we'll be giving it to the scope and once both of these are done we will be requiring another voltage sensor at the output terminals to see how the output waveform looks like so we will be connecting it with respect to positive and ground so ground can be anything all of them are the same the significance of all of them uh, so control c control v will be requiring another simulink converter so uh, connect this uh, to the simulink converter and give it to the scope in this particular fashion so this solver configuration block can be connected it should just touch the circuit uh, at any point doesn't matter uh, for the simulation to take place so we will be entering the parameters now uh, we have chosen r1 r2 and r3 to be rf to be equal to 5 kilo ohms so use this drop down and select kilo ohm over here click on ok similarly we will do it with respect to r1 and r2 as well so 5 and then use the drop down to select kilo ohm over here and with respect to resistor r2 choose the value to be equal to 5 and choose kilo ohms over here so once all of these are done so now uh, we have to enter the supply voltage parameters so this is chosen to be equal to 4 volt the frequency i will be choosing it to be 1000 hertz you can change the frequency and write for different frequencies as well uh, and then uh, with respect to the voltage source 2 we will be uh, choosing it to be equal to 2 volt and the frequency should be the same 1000 hertz uh, so we have connected in this particular fashion uh, and we have entered all the parameters that are required to be uh, with respect to this particular circuit one of the most important things with respect to the simulation runtime is we need to choose it to be in milliseconds uh, so very very careful uh, observation because if you have it in seconds uh, what happens is that you will not get the exact waveform and you'll be wondering how is this looking in this particular fashion or something like that so be very careful with respect to this and uh, click on run So now you can double click on the scope in order to check how the output waveform looks like with respect to the input. So uh, clearly uh, this is V1, the one that is there in blue. So you are supplying 4 volt and the one that is there uh, in yellow is nothing but V2. So that is 2 volt. So this is the output. You are getting minus 6 volt, which is an inverted one with respect to the supply. Uh, so it is clearly performing the required output with respect to uh, the circuit that we have designed. So uh, I hope uh, the process of uh, designing and inverting summer and simulating them in MATLAB is understood. Uh, please do try it. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out uh, by typing in your questions in the comment section below. If you like this video, please do like it, uh, share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates. Thanks for watching this video. Please do keep supporting. Thank you.